We're excited about participating in uh, cutting edge technologies. The left atrial pressure monitoring device, which is the first of its kind developed in the world to monitor real time cardiac function and provide uh, use combination of patient input and uh, physiologic input to, to determine when to take the medications uh, in order to control heart failure is uh, pretty exciting for us. The system is actually called the HeartPod device. The HeartPod device sits inside the heart within the left atrium and continuously can monitor the left atrial pressure, an important measurement for managing heart failure patients. It then communicates wirelessly to a device that actually can feed back the actual measurement to the patient and also via the internet to the physicians managing the patient. The, the premise of the study is that the patients who have the active device will be able to have the information fed back to the provider, uh, in this case the cardiologist, and we will adjust their medications through a, a, a prescription plan via a handheld uh, electronic device. And the patient's medications can be adjusted on a near daily basis with adjustments to the dosage for morning, afternoon, and night for certain uh, types of medications. This allows us to fine tune management of fluid status, body weight, and uh, other types of medication adjustments. The idea with this left atrial pressure monitoring system is much earlier in the sequence of events, possibly a few weeks, maybe more, we would be able to intervene earlier and prevent the subsequent worsening of weight gain uh, symptoms of heart failure and hopefully prevent hospitalizations or emergency room visits. So this device will provide information to both the patient and the clinicians taking care of them uh, regarding the status of their heart. And it particularly looks at left atrial pressure, which is a pressure generated in one of the chambers of the heart, which gives us clues of at what, at what point the heart may potentially start to fail and have a backup of fluid. Um, and most of these patients, when they have backup of fluid, it ends up resulting in symptoms, shortness of breath, not being able to walk around the house and do the activities of daily living, like uh, brushing your teeth, going out to get mail from the mailbox, uh, just uh, simple items such as a vacuuming or even uh, personal care. So many of these symptoms occur as a result of pressure being built up and fluid overload into the lungs, uh, providing the shortness of breath and decreases their activity significantly. The way it measures it is it, uh, the device that was implanted will measure pressures from the left atrium, send it to a small portable device, and it may be a standalone device or part of the defibrillator, their heart failure device. And from there on, the patient will get the readings uh, transmitted to a small palm pilot or palm-like device. And this, the patient keeps it at home, and it will download information on there along with a computer algorithm that will tell the patient, take your medicine today or don't take it today. Uh, we now prescribe medicine the way we've done it for 2,000 years. We give you enough medicine, we take the same dose every day. If you feel better, great. If, you, if, you, if it's not helping, you switch to another medicine. But we know the body doesn't work that way. The body actually requires uh, certain chemicals or certain changes every day, even almost every hour of the day. But right now we still give medicine the old-fashioned way of you take the same dose every day and we just assume that on average that that helps you. With this new information, the goal, is, uh, the instructions to the patients will be the device itself will tell them skip your water pill today or take more of your water pill today. Or, and there will be different combinations to that and that is, kind of, that is actually unique because it's personalized for that one patient. It will be a very different set of instructions for another patient. The closest analogy uh, on personalized care and trying to get uh, treat disease before patients develop symptoms is uh, the warning lights on the car dashboard. Once the engine light goes off or the oil light goes off, you're usually in bad shape. So right now the way medicine is traditionally practiced is once you get short of breath or the engine light goes off, once you already have symptoms, then you seek care and then the clinicians will say, okay, let's change your medication around. But what if before you get symptoms, if we had some early warning of what's going on with the system and the physiology of the body, that we can actually modify your medicines while you still feel well, can we prevent the next set of symptoms from developing and maybe prevent another two weeks worth of recovery if we can uh, prevent the symptoms from progressing. So I think personalized medicine in the next, for, the nec for this coming century will involve, a, uh, while it will involve a large amount of uh, genomic studies, there will be a lot of functional integrated physiology that will need to be understood. 
uh, in order to, uh, to determine how these integral, how are all our organs, the heart, the brain, uh, the rest of the body work together uh, to, to do what it needs to do every day. And if we can get more information and understand how that information is transferred and pick up clues before the, inter before the system breaks down, before you develop symptoms, then we can act earlier. Um, and that premise is now possible because of computer technologies and biomedical engineering technologies that allow us to sense things in the body safely and be able to transmit it to a device that both includes the patient in their care as well as the, the uh, medical system or the clinicians as well. We do know that heart failure exacerbations lead to worsening uh, cardiomyopathy and, and decon um, decompensation. So if we can prevent these things from happening, uh, prevent the, the worsening kidney function or liver function or other things, then perhaps we can improve um, not just the quality of life for the patient, but actually the, the length of life.